What up, everybody? It's your boy DTLF here with my co-host Empire Jeff. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. How about yourself? Doing good, bro. Uh, hopefully, uh, Chris will join us here shortly if he's available. <laughs> uh, oh, there he is. Actually, right on. <laughs> hey, better late than ever. Chris, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up, Welcome, man? bro. Oh right? man, what a day! What a day! How you guys what? doing? You're on pretty good, man. And yourself? Oh man, I'm getting getting by. Getting by. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thank you for joining us today, brother. Uh, right on time, actually. We just started it. What's up, Chet? How are you guys doing as well? Oh, Shout we're live? Chris. Yeah, we're live. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Come on to say, tell Chris we're live. Tell Chris we're live. Man, yeah. <laughs> it looks official. Man, I'm yes, trying to bring some, I was trying to bring some better energy. My bad, my bad. No, no, you're good. You're good. Let, 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 let me, let me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. He got his OG <laughs> shade on with you, Chris. All right, here we go. So let's get into it. I wanted to ask my brother... Uh, both of my brothers, man. Have you did you guys tap in and watch baseball at 3 a.m. man in Korea? Talk to me. Talk to me, Jeff. That, yeah, that's yeah, why man. I'm that's why I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. And then Jeff, yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, man. I I I didn't this morning because I did the first game and I did a live stream of the first game and I was dying, bro. Shout out to everyone who was on that stream, man, because I was I was falling apart there. I went to bed at like 11 30, got up at three. Did the stream, tried to take a nap. Lucky wasn't having it. And uh, so I basically then went to work for like 10 hours. And like I said, I came home last night, man. Uh, I knocked out for like 10 hours. I can't remember, nine hours. I can't remember the last time I got that much sleep. But yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was great. It was great to do it. There was a bunch of issues, man. The feed was cutting out. The feed froze. We couldn't watch on ESPN. Then they put ESPN on Spectrum because the feed was all jacked up. Umpire was yeah. on one. So uh, outside of that, but uh, yeah, man, it's a... Uh, you know, I've been saying all year, uh, all off season. You know, Dan, I've been saying I can't wait for everyone to get more excited and more into baseball. And then these MFs and went and did some three AM games in 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 Korea and they made it me, impossible. Bro, I missed them both. I yeah, missed it made both. it impossible for us to to try to pull some new people in out the gate. But we're gonna get them. We're gonna get them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Long season ahead, man. We still got yeah. what 160 games to go. <laughs> during this yeah, yeah. So, so right. yeah, sure. we're gonna have plenty of opportunities, man. Y'all definitely tap in with my guy Empire Jeff TV. He's gonna be covering them whenever Appreciate he gets an opportunity. And I will try to tap in from time to time. But uh, Chris, did you catch any Dodger baseball yourself, my brother? Yeah, man, got to catch both, especially the first one with um, with Jeff. Uh, a shout out to everyone that made it to the uh, to watch the game. Yeah, man, crazy. Uh, it, that first game was awesome. Uh, I love the ball ripping through the glove. That was amazing for the Dodgers. Uh, but uh, the second game, yeah, I, I caught. Um, the later half of it because i just couldn't wake up man. i just could not i'm still tired from the 3 a.m game yeah but no. it was a great game i hated to see uh machado up there and hit that freaking home run to take them up. What, what did they go up by four after that three or four um yep. after his home run yeah, uh, 15, you know, he's, yeah he's he's hated uh, you know uh when uh, he plays the dodgers so just because of everything that went down when he was on the team uh uh, I've never liked him because of the no hustle. You know, I like to see guys that just hustle every play, every time. But the guy is talented. He's a great defensive player too. Um, but yeah, it was it was tough watching that. Um, I think the Dodgers have a, a great season ahead of them. Yeah, man, it's it's exciting to, to see. I saw the highlights. Um, yeah. I was excited because yeah. I was like, I'm gonna go to the movies. I, I got to see Dune too, which by the way is a great movie. Dropped the review the other day. Um, oh, and great review, yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you, thank you, bro. And I'll tell you, man, I'm, I'm excited. I get home. I tell my girl, babe, I'm going to stay up tonight. You know what I'm saying? I had the phone. Mm -hmm. I had the little stand where I put the phone and everything. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to stay up and watch it. All right. So I go and I try to log into the uh, MLB account my little nephew hooked me up with. And it's blacked out. So I'm like, what the hell? And then I go on ESPN, right? So, so I get up, turn on the TV, go on ESPN to see if they have it on there. And it says in the guide, it's up, right? But they have these dudes talking, this podcast, early morning podcast. And they're talking about it. it's over on ESPN one. So I asked somebody on Twitter because why weren't they airing it? <laughs> and and sure enough, it was restricted because we're in Los Angeles. Like what the? F oh, I was pissed because I was like, here I am trying to get into this. Yeah, they made it hard. Yeah. They made it difficult. On people. It. All right then. All right, I see how it is. But we're gonna have plenty of opportunities mm -hmm. to talk baseball, man. And very excited. Like the Dodgers are one and one to start the season. I know Yamamoto pitched the other night. I, I, you know, I read a couple of reviews that weren't so high on him, but he's a rookie, man, and he's going to settle in hopefully, you know, eventually. Fine. So uh, I'm still excited. It, it, it's One kind of like, one. yeah, it's kind of like the Lakers where everyone will panic, like, oh, my God. Yeah. But like uh, Jeff, you even said it, um, he was experimenting in the uh, 
in uh in those first couple games. Uh the, the so, kid's nasty, man. He's yeah, gonna yeah, be he's, fine. Yeah, he's gonna be he's, fine. <laughs> I, what's the uh Cy Young over there that they, what do they call it? He didn't he he won a couple of those. Multiple. He's fine, he's gonna be mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not not too concerned about it. It's only one game. Baseball is a long season. It's, it's two times an NBA season, pretty much. So, uh, so let's go ahead and dive into the NBA. All right, guys, with 13 games left in the season, what are your expectations for the Lakers the rest of the way? And I'm gonna start with my guy Chris. What's your expectations, bro, for the Lakers moving forward? Um, I think they're gonna squeeze in there. Uh, they're definitely gonna make and make it into one of the play in games i think it's what it's called playing games yeah i'm not sure now i'm not sure where i'm not i'm not an expert like you guys but <laughs> from what i see um if we could get some of our defensive players back which who, with all these reports going on i'm sure you guys will elaborate on that um who knows but well i think you guys know more than anybody else um <laughs> but i want to <clears throat> see them if anything be more consistent at being consistent either on the defensive end or offensively, or both, if you know, if, if we could have that magic happen. But I think they'll squeeze in there one one of those. Uh, what is it, nine or ten? Is it like mm-hmm. the last kind of? Yeah. And then um, I do have all the trust in the world with AD and LeBron in the playoffs. Right now, Darvin Ham, I okay, he did great last year, but I have more trust in the players, which is LeBron and AD in the playoffs not right now because you know they are going to take games off and i don't want to mean i don't say games off where they're going to sit they might just take it easy on court and you mm-hmm. know that's crazy to say but lebron mm-hmm. is what almost 40 39 so yeah Next year, yeah, yeah yeah so so yeah trust me i went to i tried to play four games uh four days in a row and yeah i was exhausted i was like no man i can't do this i don't know how these guys do it at that age in the nba as professionals and not only do you play every or every other day you also practice or do like you know light running here and there and then you also work out and then you do the flights and then you do this and that and then you do interviews so i'm like man yeah i couldn't do that so yeah yeah. it's a long season man you're absolutely right and yeah he is 39 but he still shows flashes of brilliance go ahead john yeah What, what are your expectations brother uh if you have any, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this team, team, this team, like I, I, we talked the last show we did, Dan, when I said, like, if they, this is, this was dating back to before they went into Sacramento, right? And like, like I was like, AD needs to kill this narrative. He didn't. Um, he needs to go out there and show these were turn this team around. They didn't. Like, you need to prove to these guys that you can beat them and not have two teams that we, that own us, um, heading into the playoffs. They didn't. Um, obviously they had that, that the Lakers all, all and then the Lakers have these ignorant, situational games like like that 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 golden state game which I, I was at my nephew's birthday i couldn't watch it live so i had to go back and watch it right and like stuff like that only happens to the lakers like those games are just we are we have the worst luck this season health coaching referees overall just effery out there in these games and it's just like there's no consistency at all uh whatsoever in what their games entail whether it's their effort, whether it's their shooting, whether it's their strategies, whether it's their rotations, whether it's so the only thing that you can hope for is kind of like what Chris said, is that they look at the play in playoffs as kind of the reset. And let's forget about all this nonsense we've done all year. And Braun, we know, can take it to another level. AD, we know, can take it to another level. And we have to hope that D'Lo just maintains this level, right? Maintains this level. I don't know if D'Lo has to take it to another level. Uh, AR is going to have to take his defense <laughs> to another level. Um, a lot of these guys are going to have to take things to another level, right? So right. can they all take it to the next level? And the next level, how about levels in, in rosters? Are we going to get Gabe and Vando back? There's conflicting reports out there, right? I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if we're going to touch on that. You want me to roll with that now? But there's we, we don't know who's even going to be playing. Right. Sure. Go, go um, ahead. Touch on that, Jeff, because because that was the next question, actually. So go ahead. Just take it. Away. Okay. So so like everything. Th- what what drives me nuts with the Lakers organization is, and I hate that I have to say this, but they're almost becoming Clipperish when it mm-hmm. comes to their their explanation on injuries, mm-hmm. um, because you you have these reports coming out that Vando and Gabe are not coming back, which I don't believe. I don't believe, by the way, right? Um, but you have all these different things. So Gabe, 
ended up being it's going to end up basically being out the entire season, right? So um, Christian Wood, like, why didn't he get this surgery right away? It's a four to six week recovery time. If you know this is what it's going to take, you're going to try to recover. Just get him out. You're, he's not playing a ton right now, anyways. He's not really impactful right now. Get him right. out of there. Get the surgery and guarantee a return. So now you get the surgery. Now if he does come back, it won't be till playoff time, right? So you've got all that. And then like the Vando situation, when they announced that, I was like, I don't. I'm still not convinced he's coming back. The only one I was really convinced on was Gabe, right? And right. then you get the thing coming out about now he might not be back, but I still think he will. Yeah. Um, but like I said, we still don't know. And there's still the plan to bring them back if they do come back. But what if they have a setback? So like I right. said, it, I think it's really hard for this team going into this stretch of not even knowing who they're going to war with. And um, and and that's what's the frustrating part because it seems like it seems like from the towards the end of his training camp, we've just not had our entire team the entire season. So that's why we've been inconsistent. So it's really hard to say where we are. I still think that in in, in a playoff situation, um, there are plenty of teams we could beat, even if we get in at a at a seven, eight, nine, or ten. Ten is not ideal. I mean, obviously, nine is not much better. Eight is better. Seven would be ideal in the play-in. But there was a point where they they could have got fifth or sixth, and they just let some things slip away, fell out of that. Uh, but they do now have the twentieth toughest schedule remaining of the thirteen. So they went through that toughest part when they were in the high, you know, they were in the top third. Now they're in the bottom third. And if my memory suits me right, I think only Dallas um, has an easier schedule of them versus anyone they're racing with right now. So right. that does go in their favor. But are they going to handle business, Dan? That's that's the question. Are they going to show up? That is the question. I love Kurt. I love Kurt's quote right here. Who would have thought AD is unbreakable, surrounded by a team of full of Mister? Man, I gotta, I gotta hit that. I gotta. Yeah, Kurt is that's funny, it right though. there. That's oh, it right man. there. Yeah, it's like the opposite of what we thought. Usually, it's AD getting hurt and everybody else staying healthy for the most part. But man, it, it's been crazy, bro. And uh, and yeah, and I also wanted to get into the Jalen Hushafino thing. For me, though, before I do, uh, I gotta say that this team right here man um, my expectation for them is just to make the playoffs if they mm -hmm. don't make the playoffs i've lowered the bar due mm -hmm. to the injuries oh. due to the poor mm -hmm. coaching due to everything i've lowered the bar i just expect them to make the playoffs if they miss the playoffs it'll be a supremely underwhelming season you know what i'm saying like like supremely that probably the most underwhelming season we've seen since 2012 when we had nash dwight when kobe tours his achilles and then dwight couldn't even lead us to a to one win you know what I'm saying? Like that was that was bad when we we basically missed the playoffs that year the way we played, mm -hmm. uh, even though we made it technically. But yeah, I mean, my, that's my expectation. I've lowered the bar. All I expect the Lakers to do is to make the playoffs. If they don't miss the playoffs, I'll be so extremely disappointed. I expect heads to roll, heads to get chopped, all that good stuff, man. Um, now, let's talk about Jalen Hushafino because the rookie, right, uh, last year's draft 17th overall pick. Obviously, uh, you, you see Dan Spiration's quote right here. He says, and Jalen Hushafino, bro, broke his back. Kid's a bus raider. Well, actually, I think the opposite. This is what mm -hmm. I have to say. So pretty much he's a 6'5", 215-pound point guard who's, who has struggled to stay healthy. We didn't even know he was dealing with this injury, right? And uh, he's only averaged, I believe, in 21 games, 1.6 points per game, shooting 22% from the field and 0 0.4 assists. And in 15 games in the G League, he was actually balling. He was averaging 22 points shooting 43% from the field and 32% from beyond the arc with 5.5 assists and four rebounds. So I think it's, it's commendable that he tried to play through this injury, and now we see why potentially mm -hmm. he looks so slow coming out of the gates. What do you guys think uh, is in store for uh, Jalen Hushafino's future moving forward? And do uh, you think this explains why he played kind of poorly whenever he got any shot in the regular season? I'll let uh, Chris go first. Yeah, I'll make it quick because um... – I, I, I tr I've tried to be a fan. Um, I've definitely, you know, always, whoever we draft, and especially with this regime, um, I've tried to give the benefit of the doubt. And um, um, the um, front office before even Rob came has had a decent, you know, um, what do you, how do you, how do I say it? Um, track record. Track record of, of uh, I was going to say, my brain is still on work. I was going to say downloading players, <laughs> um, uh, uh, you know, um, getting getting oh. certain players in. So, yeah, and and um, I I was willing, and I know we need bodies. I know this, this Laker team with LeBron and AD need bodies like right now, but I was willing to give him some time. Might, he might be a project. Um, 
I saw the highlights. I didn't watch any of the um, games he played in the G League. So um, I just saw highlights, and of course, it's going to be all great. But uh, yeah, I think if he can get some time up in the pros and not just thrown into situations like I think, Dan, you've even said it on your a bunch of your shows where he's just been thrown into some bad situations where it just won't work out for him. What being down 45 points, uh, you know, in certain situations and they just throw him in and say, hey, here, do something. And, you know, it's just not going to work. But um, that it goes back to Darvin Ham. And I just want to trust Darvin Ham the rest of the year. Please do something, man. Please get your hands out your pockets. <laughs> and, your Please. Out and, your Please. and and I want him for the rest of the year not to try to be the smartest dude in the room, try to be the toughest guy in the room. I want you to manage these players. I want you to – man, how about just call a timeout when we need one and you see we need one? Just that's – if if I could get that. And he's been getting, I, I want to say, not better, but – it's been building up there. I've seen it. I've seen it. And we've seen right. it um, when you guys are on playback. Um, shout out to you guys on playback, by the way. You guys have been amazing. Right. You know what I do when you guys are on playback? Because yeah. I go back and forth between your channels. What right. I do is I, I turn I turn the, the, the TV um, volume. Yeah. All the, oh, yeah. You see that? I go all the way off. I'm like, I don't want to hear nothing you guys say because it's usually <laughs> garbage. Brother. Thank and then, you. And then, and then you two, I put you guys loud. Appreciate but, yeah. you, man. When, when you guys are on playback, it's amazing. I love it. I don't even recognize anymore the uh, the uh, the other channels. But, um, yeah, I just want to see. It's time to just start building off what we have. And just if you can, Darwin, just start building. And that means giving your other – the players just confidence and let them do what they do best. Let them do it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the thing about that whole situation is that with Jalen Hutchifino, he's going to take time. And, oh. uh, I, you know, it, I, we just we didn't draft him for him for immediate impact. If you guys heard about the reports, um, it turns out Rob Palenka uh, made the final decision on who, who to take. Right. So he likes something about Jalen Hood. We obviously haven't seen the reason we, we drafted him yet, but maybe he'll be a late bloomer, like the chat says. Maybe he will. Uh, you know, be somebody who comes into his own, or maybe he's just going to be a trade chip or nothing. It could be nothing. It, every draft pick doesn't guarantee you hit anyways, right? Historically, throughout the history of the NBA, er, there's always hits and misses for every franchise, right? We didn't we didn't see Greg Oden get drafted over Kevin Durant. We didn't see uh, people get drafted over Michael Jordan. We didn't see people get drafted over Kobe Bryant. Like, it's going to happen, right? So, But I think that's part of the excitement of the NBA draft is you never know right? And the words of Forrest Gump, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, right? So it's exciting. And it's also, it's part of the, the fun of being a fan and, and trying to figure out what players are worth taking. Now, Jeff, personally, do you think we made the right choice taking Jalen Hushafino or is too early to determine that or the wrong choice, should I say? It's too early to say we did the right or or wrong pick. So uh, the thing, the problem is, is everyone wants to complain, uh, compare JHS to Jaime Hawkins Jr. or Cam Whitmore, right? Mm -hmm. um, one thing you got to understand is if you swapped Whitmore for JHS, you, you would not see this version of Cam Whitmore on the Lakers that you're seeing in Houston. You wouldn't see that. You wouldn't see the freedom. You wouldn't see the minutes. You wouldn't see the opportunity. Okay, you wouldn't see it. Now, JHS may not play to the level of Cam Whitmore in Houston right now because he's been dealing with injuries all year. He's not, he's not, you know, the, the guy that's looking for buckets like that, right? He's more of a point guard. So right. if you swap those two to start of the season, that's the problem. You would not have seen this version of Cam Whitmore here. I promise you. Now, Jaime Hawkins Jr. I think you could have still seen this same version here. Agreed. So, yep. so um, but I will say this. I, I, the one thing I hate, uh, and you guys know me and my, you know me, I'm always with my, my narratives, right? It's always narratives, narratives, them narratives, right? Mm -hmm. The thing yep. is uh, the thing that kills me about the Palenka report, is Palenka has overridden every single draft pick that we've had. And when he overrode and took Kuzma, no one complained. Same right. for Josh Hart. No one complained, right? You're not going to always hit on these. It is the, um, it is, salute to my guy, Lakers, uh, Lakers of five DJ over there, my brother, man. Salute to you, bro. Um, it is the scouting department's job to make recommendations. And at the end of the day, if he, if he just listens to the scouts, and doesn't do his own job and misses every time it's still on him right and when he gets when he does great it's on the scouts when he goes bad it's on him you get what i'm saying that yeah. comes with the job that comes with the job 
But Rob Polinka, um, because I checked on that immediately. <laughs> and Rob Polinka um has had several and Rob Polinka still believes in JHS. And uh the same reason why the more than 15 teams didn't take Whitmore is the same reason the Lakers didn't. Um the say like there's there were over 20 teams that that, that missed out on Jaime Hawkins Jr. So like I said, it's not just the Lakers that did it. It just is what it is. Not it, it could be frustrating when someone you could have got you didn't get, but like I said, Joker was late in the second round and got drafted during a Taco Bell commercial. And he's the best player in the league. So you get yep. what I'm saying? So yep. so these things happen. Our biggest problem this season is not worried about our draft pick of JHS because that was never going to be about this season, right? Mm-hmm. That That's not that's not our problem, all right? But, right. however, um, the Lakers are not a team where any rookie was going to come in in a guard position and have any type of real impact or opportunity this season. So I think it is unfair and too early to call the kid a bust. A disappointment? If you want to say that, okay. But I don't know what your... Tell me what your expectations were for this kid before the start of the season, and let's see how realistic those were before you judge him as a bust. Because if you had him as a rotational player, then you were tripping from the get-go, right? If you had him as a guy that maybe could impress in spot minutes and then Mm -hmm. maybe carve out a back-end rotation role or some minutes if someone got hurt, okay, then we could talk, right? But if you had this dude making like an all-rookie team on this team, you were tripping from jump. So your expectations were out the window, but it it's too early to call. What is he? 20, Dan, 20 years old. Yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. Remember all those people calling Malik Monk a bust in Charlotte. Yep. I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, yep. Great take as always, Jeff. Now I, I'll say this. My own little thing about Jay Lynch, if you know, is that, you know, people have slotted him to be, you know, the scouts has had slotted him to be a, a lottery pick of the 14th overall pick in the draft. So the fact that we got him at 17, mm-hmm. he actually slipped on the draft boards. So, uh, you know, you guys know throughout the years, I never like to judge a rookie player on what he's done, although some do exceed expectations, right? Like I've, I've been a huge fan of what Chet and Wembyama have done. Uh, same thing with Jaime Mahakez, all these guys, right? Even Brandon Miller has kind of, uh, you know, mm-hmm. succeeded my expectations. So uh, I'll say, man, it, it's just uh, we'll see what happens with Jalen Hood. But please, please, casuals, y'all need to cut Jalen Hood Shafino some slack. And for those of us that have been watching basketball for years, we know, we know how it goes. It's going to be up and down until he finds his identity. Matter of fact, somebody who's recently found his identity at year 28, all right, at the age of 28, is D'Angelo Russell, who's now been in the league 10 years. And he's been balling the heck out. Matter of fact, uh, he's about to break the all-time three-point mm-hmm. shooting record in the regular season. Yeah, we see Chris wearing that fire-ass Court Kings. Uh, definitely get yours, get your merch right now at shopcourtkings.com. We see you, Chris. So this guy's been icy hot, man. And uh, he's about to break the, the three-point uh, shooting record for a regular season with a good cushion, 13 games left. Uh, I got to ask you guys, is he the best three-point shooter the Lakers have ever had, in your opinion? I'll start with Jeff. Uh, the best three-point shooter? See, the Lakers have never really had snipers. And I, I think that if the three was around in Jerry West's era, I think he probably would have been up there. Like, Ooh, or some of like the, the older guys, you know what I mean, that didn't have uh-huh. the, that, that shot like available to a lot of them. Um, but... Mm-hmm. Um, I would say he's he's the best. Mm, man, that's really tough. That's tough. Um, because that the game was played so differently where it wasn't just green lighted for threes. I think guys yeah. like if you think about guys like Byron Scott, if you thought about like you know, those Showtime Lakers of threes were big back then. They had shooters, but shooting the three then, like you do now, just wasn't the same. So I would say he's the best three point shooter of this era. I would say like post show because Nick the Quick was nasty too, man. And uh, for those yeah. who didn't watch him, Eddie Jones was nasty too, man. Eddie Jones, when I think had the record for God, it's been a while, but this this was uh, and I think this was uh, around like right after they got Shaq. I think he broke the record for as many games as uh, records for two threes in consecutive games. So um, that was. Uh, he was nasty with it. Like I said, you had uh, Nick Nick the Quick was nasty with it. Um, now we had Glenn Rice after his prime, and we only had and we didn't have we only had him for like a year and a half. And but but as far as like if you go down as the number one all time, right? And yeah. uh, I don't know if I'm willing to give him the best of all time, but but he's gonna break the record. So like I said, for me in, in my era of watching, I would say I would say Nick because man, that boy's clutch. That's always shout out to Dilo for that running little shot. I, I caught that when he did it. Uh, yeah. I remember that shot against San Antonio. I remember that. Um, yeah. shout out to Vladi for tipping out that rebound, too. Um, but um, but uh right. like yeah, like it was yesterday, bro. Time flew. Nick, Nick, Nick was one of my favorite Lakers of all time, man. But that oh, broke my heart right. when they traded him. So Nick, Nick to me was a better player than D'Lo. 
Nick mm-hmm. to me was more uh, more skilled than D'Lo, more aggressive than D'Lo, more more tenacious than D'Lo. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm still taking Nick over D'Lo, even even the shooter. Uh, so so I'm gonna say no. Okay, okay. What about you, Chris? It's uh... oh, yeah, I I remember that Nick the quick uh, three, uh, like it was yesterday. Yeah, it's same thing, man. You know, I I do agree where uh, Nick is more aggressive, more assertive. Like he'll if he sees that they need a little punch in the gut and this is you know the lakers if they need a little punch in the gut to like get it going he i still remember him like getting into his own players faces like he'll mm-hmm. sit, he'll be like hey come on what what are we doing here you know he wasn't the one two three cancun guy that wasn't him he was <laughs> he was you know doing his thing and then four on the referee guy yeah <laughs> oh my gosh I, I yeah i was gonna bring that up yeah that was amazing like that Watching him play in the forum always helped me, like, just, you know, try to just do my little best, you know. I'm not saying that I do anything on anybody's court. Uh, when I'm playing, I just – it just showed me, like, you could be the smallest dude. You could be the slowest guy. You could be the weakest guy on the team. But if you show some aggression and you just do your best, sometimes you outwork and and win against, you know, the best player on the court. So, you know, it's some you could say on basketball, you know, talent always wins out versus anything else. But, yeah. you know, sometimes you could just out hustle a dude. And so that's what I love the bottom, just that little aggressiveness, uh, mm-hmm. just being angry. Um, I, my, I, I used to always stare at his weird eyebrows. You know, I just thought everything. That was a style, man. He, he made that <laughs> yeah. thing out here. Yeah, People yeah, were yeah. Doing that, man. People were, uh-huh. were doing yep. it. Yeah, I'm not making fun of it. It's just I remember it like I'd go to school and see it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so I used to love his his hair, his haircut, his style on the court. I used to love all that, man. And uh, uh, Eddie Jones was um, loved Eddie Jones. I still have his rookie card. I used to try to do everything Eddie Jones did. I still remember, and I think uh, Jeff, you were y'all heard when when they got traded. Were y'all were y'all heard? Oh, oh man, man. I didn't want that trade. For I Glenn, didn't want that trade. Yeah. I didn't yeah, want that, that trade. That Glenn time. Rice trade, yeah. That I, was trying, I was trying to get into basketball, so I wasn't too familiar. Oh with man, game. man, I love oh, that man. team. I love I that team. About six years old, I think, when Kobe first got drafted. So yeah. However, I will say, if they don't make that trade, it doesn't open yeah. the door for Kobe to be Kobe. So I yeah. get why they did the yes. trade. Uh, but man, that that team. I know we're going way off subject here, but that team. Oh yeah, I know. That team was uh was was dope, man. Getting into the playoffs and beating the team. And when we beat that Seattle, man, I can go on forever. Oh man. my god. When we beat yeah. Seattle, okay, that's why okay, a lot yeah. of people don't know. The reason why George Carl hates the Lakers was because yep. of that team. Yep. They mm-hmm. got George Carl fired from Seattle. So he's hated the Lakers ever since. Then he George went to Denver and they busted his ass there too. That guy. Yeah, so it's like, but they ran him out of Seattle. There was yep. also the team that 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 um that that Shaq walked up to the bench and then just said, "I'll see y'all next year." His final year in Orlando, and oh, then like, oh yeah, man, gosh, and Gary Payton was yeah. like, "Y'all for real?" Like that that team was, mm-hmm. that team was great. The problem was that team was never going to be. It was that team was the team prior to Braun was starting to remind me of that team when you had Bi uh, yeah. Zoe, all those guys. But yeah. just like that team, you weren't going to be able to keep everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like, but yeah, but that that team. So Nick Nick's, I think, skill set. A lot of people didn't oh, really man. like. Oh, yeah. So, so um, but I, oh. I know the question was the greatest shooter of all time because I don't oh, think there's well. any question that Nick is a better player than Dilo. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, I think well, I almost got to rethink the question here. <laughs> I know. An I know. I know. It is a tough question. question. An answer yeah, the way that Andrew Russell hasn't had that. enough clutch, like uh, altering mm-hmm. franchise altering shots for me to put him in that category. Like mm-hmm. for me, the best three point shooter isn't about the percentage or how many you make. Mm-hmm. To me, the best three point shooter is the clutch three point shots that elevate the franchise. And for me, the best three point shooter of all time well, was, it's, it's got to be Kobe because of the clutch. Kobe, yeah, 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 yeah. If you're going down oh, that path, all right, yeah. fish, fish, mm-hmm. fish hit fish tons, too, yeah. tons yep. of 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 I'll clutch. Put fish over D'Lo for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're if you're putting in that, if that's your criteria, then D'Lo's yes. not even top five. Right, I agree. Top five because because you got you got Kobe, you got Fish, you got Ori, um, you you, you got dudes out there who who like who did that. I mean, hell, yep. Brian yeah. Shaw got busy, especially in two thousand. Yep. Oh, like my. like Brian you, you, you Shaw saved, oh, man, saved us can... against the Blazers. Man, boy was yeah. good luck, man. That boy yeah. was good. Brian, Brian Shaw hit that three at the end of the third. Um, just heck, to, even to, Sasha, to just, Sasha has yep. hit more mm-hmm. threes than D'Lo, Sasha, man. Yep. Bro, uh, 
Kareem Rush had six threes in a Don't cold even, game yeah. against Minnesota. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, that so was his had, greatest moment. Yeah, great. That moment. was his only moment, really. But like we've had, but but Kareem Rush is not a better player than D'Lo. Like I'm, I'm just saying, no, about, but no, D'Lo yeah. has not even had that that moment. Well, I mean, he's had yeah. good moments. He had some good moments in Memphis. He had good moments against Golden State, but he hasn't been like where he just took over a series. Like this dude is just. His three point yeah. shooting has just destroyed this series for the really. I, I gotta see more from him in order to, to crown that. And yeah. I think he has a chance to become one of the best three point shooters we've ever yeah. had. Of course, yeah, of course, breaking the record yeah. will go a long way, but he needs to perform in the playoffs in order yeah. to beat because the Lakers have had such great history in the playoffs with guys like you already mentioned, Derek Fisher, mm-hmm. guys like that. I mean, Derek Fisher in the in the 09 finals when we beat uh Orlando, hit Orlando, some clutch threes yeah. on the road, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, to, to make sure that we put that series away, make sure that one doesn't get out of hand. Two, so it's two. like Yep. Mm-hmm. To me, Derek Fisher, when he hit that layup against uh, KG mm-hmm. and I want to say Big Baby, and he it was it on was the on the, yeah, uh, on the, the road, glass, Boston, going left to right. That's, yeah, that's the first time I ever cried in front of my in front of my wife, and she was like, <laughs> "He made a layup." And they I'm took like, the series back that game. They took yeah, the series I'm back. Like, he yeah. made he made the game winning yeah. series layup like that mm-hmm. right there. Took the series like it wasn't just a layup. It was the way he did it. Who he did it against, how he did it, took the momentum away from the whole crowd. That stadium um, was dead. That three in Orlando. That three in Orlando. Yeah, that uh, was great. Oh nine finals. Those two threes in Orlando. Yeah. Two threes, I, yeah. It sucks that the, it sucks we didn't win the championship in 04 because that point four shot was so crazy. But the fact point that they four. didn't win it waters it yeah. doesn't it doesn't feel the same because it wasn't part of a championship run. Yep. I'm I still agree. mad we lost to the, the Celtics the year before. Oh, we yeah, that, yeah, that's, a that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the year I throw away everything green. Like, I don't want green. an episode reminiscing Except Lakers in right here. real soon because I think, chat, I think they would love, they would eat it up, man. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't wait to talk Lakers. So we're going to have to make that a whole episode on the Celtics. Yeah. But yeah. let's let's move on to uh, Paul Pierce. Y'all see the thumbnail. Oh, All right. Paul Pierce was recently recruited to Undisputed. By uh, you know, Grandmaster Wizard himself, Skip oh, Bailey, right? Or they call him Skip Shameless because we know yeah. damn right why he brought him to that show. He needed a co LeBron mm-hmm. slash Laker hater to join uh, him, and uh, he's been talking crazy, guys. I don't know if you guys have been watching, but recently he guaranteed the, the Lakers will win the championship. Uh, I'm sorry, the Celtics will win the championship number 18 before the Lakers do. He called mm-hmm. our championship ring a Mickey Mouse ring, and mm-hmm. he, he went as far as to uh, call LeBron James a ball hog, basically. Mm. Um, which, which much to the pleasure of uh, Skip Bayless. And I, I saw, I see the agenda, and I'm like, okay, Keyshawn was making too many valid points. They had to go and recruit another buster on there, man. What do you guys make of Paul Pierce on Undisputed and his uh, recent uh, attacks on our Lakers, man? And let's start with Jeff. Man, it's it's funny that show starts with an un, because it shouldn't be Undisputed. It should be unwatchable. That show's trash, bro. That show sucks. And there's a reason, a rating show. No one's watching that damn shit. But they take the clips, they put it out there, and they get us talking about it, right? So yep. um, so you probably took <laughs> – I'm not confusing Paul Pierce, the basketball player, for Paul Pierce, the commentator. On the court, that dude was nasty. He, he gave dudes work, man. He was an offense. He was a killer, right? Um, but he's probably the dumbest dude in NBA media. Like, like <laughs> by far. By far. He's the like dumbest it. dude yeah. in NBA media, right? Like, by far. And mm-hmm. he says stuff. And I'm not even going to accuse him of being clickbait because he really believes this stuff. He really yeah. believes it. But he is he is the dumbest dude in TV media, right, mm. by far. I've always said his takes, like, pretty much whatever he says, it goes the other way. It I goes agree. the other way. And go back to back to that, to that episode when he got destroyed on ESPN for trying to convince the whole panel that he had a better career than Dwayne Wade. Oh, and Jalen Rose oh filleted God. him, right? Yep. Filleted yep. him. So – so I mean, you 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 got you got Skip say less because he needs to, and mm-hmm. then you got you got you got you got Paul Pierce up there, man. Um, you know what I, you know what I'm saying? Like I think he needs to have more bathroom breaks on the show, like he did in the mm. finals, mm-hmm. and uh, get out of here because because he may have been dropping dropping that ish in his diaper during the game, but he's talking that ish during Damn. the show, and it's it's trash, bro. And Fox, we already know you watch the damn show because you take his stuff. Um, y'all need to All the like time. y'all need All, to thank uh, you for saying that. All y'all the need time. to. Uh, since since you listen to everything else we say, get get that dude out of there, man. You know, how about this? How about this? We need to start a petition in chat. Get a fire emoji if you agree with this in the chat right now. Stop putting these one chippers on television. Stop Ooh. putting stop putting these dudes who who's been made a career for their whole career been living off a of chip since two thousand eight, trying to let them be the voice of a generation. Get them all the way to f out of here. You don't see the two thousand eleven Mavericks up there acting like this. You don't. You only see the two thousand eight Boston Celtics, and. A head coach who has blown more three-one leads than anyone in the history of the sport, 
continuing to get jobs over people that are more qualified that are qualified and you continuing to let these one shippers get shine turn the lights yeah. off on these clowns man big facts man you got to hit the horn one time for that, that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was oh my goodness jeff you just filleted uh you know everybody including doc rivers <laughs> you know ever, <laughs> because those one shippers you're absolutely right they they got nine lives off of that shit they're getting all kinds of opportunities you would think they won 10 championships the way they're getting jobs out here man but uh but look, man, it, this is why I, I invented the, the brand new sh segment over there on Playback called Good Take, Bad Take, because I'm going to expose a lot of these bad takes for the bullshit that they are, man. And uh, and, and I'll tell you this. You're absolutely right about Paul Pierce. This dude, man, he, he might be. He's up. To, I'll tell you the other one, the only other one, only because he's entertaining. But let's be honest, Chuck, man, Charles Barkley also always wrong about his takes. Yeah, yeah. So those two guys should have a two man race. To see who's the dumbest on national TV because both of those dudes predict stuff and it always goes the opposite end, uh, just like uh, Jeff just said, man. But how do you feel about what he said recently that uh, they're going to get to number 18, Chris, before we do? Yeah, it made me throw up in my mouth. It was gross, man. It, <laughs> it was the first thing I saw in the morning, too. And I was like, who is, why? First of all, I saw when he first came on, I'm like, okay, why is this dude here? Um, I'm embarrassed to say I uh, graduated from the same high school he did. Um, I'm embarrassed to say uh, he went to that high school and he's from that area. Uh, uh, would you say? No. Would you he, say in that situation is we disown him. We don't claim him. Yeah, I don't claim him. I never have, never will. Because because people in my little circle, and I have a little circle, but they always make fun of me because that they're like, oh, you're a Laker fan. but da -da -da. And I'm like, I just ignore him. I'm like, yeah, my next question. Um, so, yeah. Um, I was I was there when they uh, retired his jersey and everything in the high school, but whatever, man. I don't care. I ignored that too that day, and that day I wore all purple and gold. So, uh, but yeah, and um, I just want to say, yeah, uh, yeah, I stay away from uh, anything green and white or whatever yep. they call their official colors. I stay away from it. Um, I, I, man, no, yeah, man, it's it's Inglewood for life for me. But it, when I say Ingo, it is purple and gold also, man. So, yeah, I, I, I can't agree with anything he ever says because it's so just crazy. And you could see that he's uh, still getting, you know, a little bit of paper from uh, from the Celtics because anything he says, it's always pro Celtics and like not even pro Celtics. It's like pro Celtics over the NBA and anything else that's happening, which, yep. you know, OK, I understand you. They retire your jersey. You're great. And um. I watched him play in the playoffs and all that, and um, I just remember the the hatred I had against him when I, I think he even blocked one of Kobe's fadeaway threes when uh, the the year they the the Lakers lost to the Celtics, and when I saw that, I literally grabbed everything in my closet that was green, ripped it apart, and threw it away, and I told my wife I'm never wearing anything green, and I haven't yep. since. So that's all I got to say about that. It might not even answer your question. No, no, absolutely. But... <laughs> you answered the question. You just answered it your own way, which is perfect, Chris, because we love you for it. Quick um, story. <laughs> quick story. Now, I'll say F this. My take Celtics, on that whole thing, man. man is, F the Celtics. That's right. That's right. My whole situation with the Celtics is, to me, Paul Pierce, I'll even I'll put a different spin on him. I'll say he might be one of the most overrated stars of all time. And I'll say this. Yes, he's a champion, but it took – Four Hall of Famers on his team, uh, plus an overrated coach to, to make it happen, and the referees, plus injuries. All that culminated into a championship for them. But for me, what was he doing before KG, Ray Allen, and, and, and even Rondo got onto that team? You know what I'm saying? His team was constantly rebuilding. They were garbage. Uh, they were from the dinosaur era, uh, meaning they won all their championships when it was the black and white era, of, man, when TV didn't even have color. And Jim Crow said, era. Jim yeah. Crow era. And the Lakers, we win <laughs> every single generation, man. The Lakers, we win every single generation. So Paul Pierce needs to check himself before he wrecks himself again because I, I, I'll say this. They're not going to win the championship before us. They're close right now. It looks that way, right? They look like the favorites. But I have a feeling that both Jason Tatum and Jalen Green are going to choke in the finals if they even get there and or before that because, to me, they don't complement each other properly. Sure, they have the depth. They have uh, uh, the coaches questionable at best, but they have the depth for sure to compete. However, we've seen time and time again that when you have two alphas and they're not on the same page, there's going to be a, a, a wreck up ahead, right? We've seen it. We've even seen it with the great Kobe and Shaq. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you know things got off the rails, 
there was a, a wreck and it was uh, inevitable that they were eventually going to split. So that's the same thing I foresee for the Celtics. So they better count their blessings while they're winning now because I don't see too many victories in the future. And trust me, if they don't win a championship during this window, it might take another 30 years before they even sniff another one, man. So this summer, <laughs> this summer is very, very big for them. Yeah. Very, yep. very big for them. And like I said, J Jason Tatum uh, in the clutch is 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 been garbage. I mean, I, I look at the numbers, garbage. Like exactly bro. in the clutch. So uh, and his playoffs, the clutch goes up, and uh, he's been horrible in the clutch. Horrible. No, yeah. no. And, and when you have to show in a dunk contest that you have a left hand by just wearing a glove, come on. <laughs> yeah, that was cringe, bro. I don't know if that was. Yeah. Glove what was what? the deal with that? Yeah. I looked at. I was like. Dude, this is why you're a Celtic. Because <laughs> you're Courtney. Now, I'll say this. I, I, I was like, somebody informed him COVID is over pretty much because he's still wearing gloves. Is the mask coming on next or what? Like, he's not trying to touch the ball and get germs. What was that all about? There was no explanation for it, to be honest. So that's that's the thing that made it so cringe. And then the dunks were so mid. They were like regular in-game dunks. Yeah. If that, right? So it was cringe. My guy Ozzy has a question for us here, man. And anybody can take it away. He said, who do you guys think is the defensive player of the year this season? I presume he's talking about this season. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. I think, uh, Gobert, yeah. Wemby's had an incredible defensive year. I like and AD. That. I think those, to me, those would be the top three guys to me. Uh, Bam has been, uh, no, but I don't think so. So I would say Gobert, Wemby, AD. Um, AD's not going to get it no matter what. No. I can tell you that yeah. right now. They just don't give it to him. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm going to say Gobert. Because I don't think they'll give it to Wemby. Uh, Bro, they I'm might. In my mouth if I see Gobert hoist another one of those defenses. Although their record yeah, says, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, their defense but and their defenses. But no, he's, I, I he's, hate how individual yeah. accolades always get rewarded for teams' records. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think it, that's yeah. the way you should uh, critique an individual accolade. But I get it. I get it. Right? We're not winning as much. They are. They're yeah. going to get all the all the uh, trophies and stuff. And uh, I thought I, I would, that my thinking is that's why AD won't get it. He wouldn't get, get it even the Lakers yeah. in the top four. They yeah. just they right. they don't they, give him that yeah. award. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's great that he's playing as much as he can now, but yeah, I don't think he like you said, there mm -hmm. they, maybe it's the respect there. I don't know. I don't know, but um there's a there's a for sure like solid reason for it. Um, yeah, no, for sure. By the way, did you guys see the two uh poster dunks that happened last week? They were yeah. great. The one uh <laughs> one was by Jalen Johnson over Austin Reeves, hated that one. Uh, and uh, but it was filthy. And the other one was even filthier, in my opinion. The uh, Anthony Edwards, aka Ant Man, over John Collins. Now I gotta ask you guys, which one? And chat, you guys chime in as well. Which posted dunk was better? I think this is an easy choice, but you guys. Oh, it was it was Ant. It was Ant. Yeah. I mean, dunking on Austin Reeves. I mean, it was a nasty dunk. Don't get me wrong. Yep. Uh, but uh, but Ant knocked the dude out the game. Like he yeah. <laughs> he heard his he heard his head and his pride so bad to do that to leave the game. So uh, Ant. That ant is uh definitely uh definitely that but I, I have I have another well I'll let Chris answer I have another question about that dunk. Yeah, no, yeah, and mine is quick, yeah. Ant man. Um, and uh he also hurt his hand on that dunk. He mm -hmm. uh even gave uh, uh what's his name his jersey after the dunk. So yeah, it was yeah. But uh Austin Reeves, yeah, you got dunked on. And what I loved about Austin Reeves when they asked him about it, he's like, Yeah, you guys saw the play, you don't want to be me during that play, so yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, but what they said, yeah, but we didn't see the angle you had. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, was yeah. dying on that. <laughs> I was dying on that because it basically, yeah, that was hilarious. Oh, it had yeah. some dumbbells in his face, man. Yeah, it was, man. Yeah, that man. Was crazy. Uh, but yeah, they were both great dunks. Ant Man, though, man, he's just ridiculous. He's as a ball player, man, he's just a higher flyer, high riser, and just super acrobatic and just uh, agile. And the, the things he does on the court are, are amazing, guys. I've seen some crazy comparisons. We've seen the Michael Jordan comparison, which I think is outlandish. Uh, you know, say some Kobe yeah. Bryant comparisons I also think is outlandish. Like, th let these dudes accomplish something before you put that much pressure on them, you know, because we've yeah, seen yeah. it with Booker, we've seen yeah. it with Harden, none of those dudes ever live up to the hype. So don't and do he, that to Ant Man, don't set him up for failure. Yeah, he, he's more of a throwback player than those guys are. Like, he mm -hmm. takes the games more serious. You can tell he hates losing, he's he's stronger. Like, I think he's a throwback player, but he's not he's not those guys, man. He, Although, he's not, but, okay. but he is a, he is a throwback player, though. I, I do respect what you're saying. He's a throwback player, but I didn't like what he did during the All Star um, weekend. Yeah, I hated that. Kind too. of like what oh, was yeah, that? I like, like that either. I don't like that. Like um, just, just do. Like he could have won most of those challenges or what? Uh, what the skills challenge? Like you don't got to shoot left handed, dude. Just do what you do, and you. I just thought maybe he was like, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe he just you know different. 
different yeah. generation, right? Where They're different they players for sure. Yeah. It's just other lazy comparisons. Now, there's no doubt that Ant Man has a bright future. He could be one oh, of the. Yeah. Faces. I mean, he's already one of the faces of the league, but he will. He could be oh, a yeah. top three face of the league. He has that potential. However, there's a difference between a top three face of the league and being a generational talent that Kobe and Jordan were. Those dudes never took nights off. Like I've seen Ant Man take nights off. I've seen him come out and score 15 points in a game. Uh, you can't. You know, the other two were killers. It was extremely rare we saw anything like that happen to them you know so there's levels to this and i think people don't realize it's like it's almost like time erases their memory or wipes it clean to where all of a sudden they just start making outlandish comparisons yeah, Recent, the moment. Like, yeah in the heat of the moment and i hate knee-jerk reaction type takes recently we saw uh uh who was it demarcus cousins after uh Kyrie uh, made the left-handed floater he said he's better than kobe bryant well, the truth of the matter is, as much as I love Kyrie, and he's one of my modern-day favorite players because he he's a Mamba disciple, and I see a lot of similarities, he's not even a fraction of what Kobe was. Kobe was the complete package on both ends of the basketball floor, exactly. while I see plenty of flaws in my guy Kyrie's game. Plenty. And come on, one championship to five? Stop it. When will people <laughs> stop making stupid comparisons like that, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. It's like no wonder Buggy's not in the league. I mean, his IQ's not that great if you think yeah. that for real. <laughs> Holy crap, man. But, yeah, there's just – it's it sucks, and I think they're lazy in comparisons, and they're gonna continue yeah. to happen. It's like short term memory loss. Like all of a sudden, Booker's the next Kobe. That's what Stephen A. Smith said. Oh, you guys remember when uh, Harden joined the the, the Philadelphia 76ers uh, to yeah. play with them? Beat the next Kobe and Shaq. Motherfuckers couldn't even sniff a championship, let alone yeah, three yeah. in a row. <laughs> Come on, now. Crazy talk. And hey, one thing I want to stop is uh, Booker's shoes are not better than Kobe's. Even Hell, now. they're not even in the same stratosphere. Oh no, yeah, well, like what's the big? Oh. I, I love it's fine. Love what you love, like what you like, buy what you buy, and want to buy. But yeah. as I, I just still think uh, Kobe's shoes are the man, best. They're they're like now you can see. I want to say a lot of there's a big percentage in the league that wears Kobe's over Booker's shoes. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's I, more people it, in the league it, that wear Kobe's over Jordan's. Like Kobe's yeah. the number one shoe. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's we just gotta slow it down with Booker because. Just because he has a nice looking shoe, and I, I, I personally, as I a shoe designer, you know, you, you guys know my history, shoe designer. <laughs> I right. don't think it's uh, over Kobe's. I would still yeah. put Kobe's shoes, and that could be like one through, I don't even know how many Kobe has, but one through 10, one through 15. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Chat can uh, correct me on that. Yeah. Um, I don't claim to know the, 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 the lineage of it, but, um, I don't think um, Booker, which is on number one, can go over all of Kobe's collection. No, nah, and nah, you, nah. and you could throw in Nike and Adidas over that. So. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't even like the fucking Booker shoe. It looks like a like an old school dunk shoe, which is nice and clean and all yeah. that. It looks like a Van shoe to me, to be honest. Like yeah. Van, back when we used to skate, it's too wide for me. Like when I look at a basketball shoe, I actually like Anthony Edwards shoe way better than than a lot of these modern shoes that are out there. Heck, the MB ones, the Lamelo mm -hmm. balls are nicer. Um, I mean, the yeah, there these you go. right here. These right here are my favorite yeah. right here. Yeah, oh, I just got these right. the shoes are the best. Now listen, it, clearly Jordans have withstood the test of time, and they're the number one all time. Oh yeah, but then you got Kobe's, and Kobe's approaching, and he might even eclipse eventually. So especially they keep dropping all these crazy AD shoes, right? All these after death shoes. Uh, these brand new uh, ones, uh, but man, it's it just oh, uh, look at him, look at him, <laughs> yeah. Is hey, the little one, uh, yeah, I know, I'm talking about fly, pretty fly. Look at him, look at him. Look at him. Go ahead. Wake up. Look at this lazy yeah. dude right here. Look at him, <laughs> okay. Bro, dress is better than me, man. Look at this guy, man. That's wifey, man. Having him, that's <laughs> cool. uh, he, he's like, he's thinking, uh, oh, Tony, you should have hit that home run in the yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah. oh, Otani was so close to like yeah. winning that Twelve, game man. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. By the way, by the way, and, uh, and with and sorry, sorry, Dan, and with sorry. all these distractions. So, <laughs> big facts, Max. I did not submit a, a March Madness bracket. Did you guys? I haven't really been. I, I did not. Oh. Last, last two years, I've been real bad at college basketball, man. Yeah, yeah. Like real bad. I, so I usually only keep up when the Lakers have a draft pick, and I feel like today, like yeah. this year, we're gonna lose it to the Pelicans, right? I just, it just. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I think, I think they might. This, this is again that keeps coming back to a quote unquote being a a, a weak draft. So I, I think yeah. they might punt to 2025. I think I think we may have it this year. If we have it this year, then I'm definitely gonna watch the final games of March Madness just to see what's think, in there. No, I, I think that they would prefer to have it in a deeper draft next year. And and next year is 
kind of an unknown right now for the Lakers. So, I um, so too, yeah. So yeah. I, I think twenty five would be more. Um, twenty five would be more appealing to them than twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ho hopefully, because I want to keep this year's pick and hopefully, you know, tack it on as an asset. That would be great. Um. All right, man. I think that wraps it up for the basketball questions. I'll. I'll. Let's see. We got a couple of more here. Um. He said, "Wizards just beat the Kings for real." Is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, shout out to the Wizards, man. Shout out to Kyle Kuzma, ex Laker, once a champion, always a champion. Shout out to my boy Kuz, man. Hey, that's why you love the NBA. Anything is possible. On they NBA. they uh they broke that effing laser on <laughs> on the uh, Kings. Uh, no, they what played in they played in Washington. Oh yeah, they played. Yeah, yeah, you can still nice. break it from Washington. <laughs> what? <laughs> from what? They sent the missile from Washington. Yeah, Kuzma's helping us out. Kuzma's helping us out. So um. Uh, my guy Bloodhound wants to ask thoughts on Otani, and uh, we're talking about the gambling stuff. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm 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 doing some. Um, I might I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do a show tonight, but tomorrow. But I, I'm I'm I was supposed to meet with my. Uh, I, I have I have a guy that just kind of like my Dodger plug that I meet with like yeah. once a week. Um, I was supposed to meet with him to uh, later tonight, but he's not gonna be able to. Obviously, he's he's got some stuff he's working on start of the season and stuff. So maybe tomorrow. But I did talk to him, and I don't I don't have a ton, um, but. I've, I'm hearing some interesting things, so I, I, I've got to I've got to check in a few things there because I've I've uh, I've been really really busy, so I haven't been able to like dive into to everything. That's why I wanted to talk to him, but I'm gonna I'm gonna read it all today. But some of the things that I that I saw, you know, the conflicting portion of it, I think there's a reason for that. And uh, um, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna tease my show for it. I'll talk about it here too. But but I I think that the uh, I think that the language barrier and the fact that the guy involved in this is the guy who speaks for Otani is not being talked about as much as it should because when you think about it and you're going what's going on miss angie b mm -hmm. uh when you when you think about it the guy who was probably talking to everyone involved here going back to otani then going back to these people was that translator so it'd be mm -hmm. very easy for him to really frame this however he wanted to in, until until um otani until it got to them where it leaked that supposedly he paid that for him uh, to cover it up. And then when once that started to come out, his people were like, because think about it, he I think that he was even translating into his legal team, right? Oh, so, yeah. so oh, I think yeah. what happened was is once the legal team, which they do, they have a secondary, like a, like they they have it looked over, people start to say, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. And then push back on it. And this could have been even as early as yesterday, like right before Otani even started to figure out what happened. And I think that's why they fired him when they did. Um, right. so yeah. I, I think because of the language situation and for those who know that part of the world and for those who know that culture, um, they don't really mess with too many outsiders, especially someone yeah. like Otani. Right. Yeah. So once you were in that circle of trust and he trusted this dude, right. Like, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. once you're in there, um, he wasn't going to be like, just talking to like American investigators. He wasn't going to be talking like, yeah. you know, if he wasn't going to be doing it. He's going to go through his translator. Right. But little did he know yeah. that his translator was a guy. You know that that uh, that you know what it's crazy. I've always wondered, like in the in the MMA and UFC as well, because I've seen sometimes like the Spanish translators don't translate everything properly. Yeah, so I wonder, like yeah. why if they manipulate a lot of these athletes through the translations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and I'll be honest, when I seen the uh introduction the introductory press conference for Otani, I was wondering the same thing. His guy looked kind of snarky. Now I, I usually am pretty good at reading people, so I'll Ooh. say that's all I'll say. Who knows? Damn. The truth? Yeah, yeah, no, right. and and because even like you see like Canelo's translator sometimes, right? Yeah, like like we're yep. talking like that's not what he just <laughs> like. Yeah. They're Obviously. trying to they're trying Obviously. to take they're trying to take three hundred words down to fifty. I I understand that portion. That's kind of the skill in translation. You kind of summarize it all and get it out there. But but I also think that um like I said, he was the guy talking to both parties, so he was playing both mm -hmm. sides. Yeah, and it oh, got yeah. to a point he didn't realize that eventually the lawyers yeah. were gonna check all all this, right? And check on yeah. all this. And once yeah. they did, they're like they, they yeah. hit him with the no 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 yeah. no like this isn't this isn't give, what that happened. So, you got to do the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's pretty much that's no, I but, think that's but, what happened. Dan, Dan, I felt the yeah. same way that introductory conference. Yeah, I felt. You know how your spirit, your spirit tells you something, something is off. It doesn't tell you like exactly like this person, that person. Yeah, this is off. This that's off. But your spirit. You know, you have you have a spirit, you have an aura. Something tells you something is wrong. Keep your eyes up. Keep your antennas up. Something is off. That's how I felt. I never um, watched any of Otani's uh, angel stuff because he was a you know an angel. Um, 
I never knew that they were connected for that long. But that first press conference at Dodger Stadium, I did feel like something is telling me, and I don't know what, and you could say higher level than than, than, than me, um, something is off. I didn't like it. It didn't feel right. The whole you know press conference yeah everybody's happy it was like it was like watching uh michael jordan retire you know it was that many people out there uh, uh watching it but um yeah i it's something kept telling me like something's off something's off something's off and the more you keep seeing these interviews with the guy um i even had like a t-shirt like ready with them two being like you know, yeah. brothers and i was gonna be like hey let's give this put this out on core kings and then something kept telling me like yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> on no, every, I'm not. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. Like I have it. I get yeah. feelings. I get vibes mm -hmm. about people. Like this is how yeah. I met y'all, and I liked y'all immediately. I usually uh -huh. get vibes about people just by seeing the body language and everything. I pay attention to detail. So when I was watching that press conference, yeah. I kid you not, on everything I had that thought. Like I wonder if he's translating everything properly or if he's a sneaky yeah. dude. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Vibes. But I don't want to judge him. I'm just saying. No, that yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, right. I'll say. I'll say. I'll say one thing real quick because I, I um. The media people who cover the Dodgers and even some of the people that cover the Angels never like this guy. Mm. I didn't. I didn't pay much attention to that. I did. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna act like Damn. like I never paid much attention to that. But I, you know, oh, a guy yeah. that's between a guy and a star. They don't like agents sometimes. They don't like PR guys. So me, I just took it as they're interrupting you from doing your job. So I understand why you probably didn't like him. Um, and I and and when I said that though, and then and then they told me that um, and I and I and I, and I, and I know a guy that was covering the Dodgers back when Nomo was here. And he goes, they're not all like that, though. They're not all like him. Like, like, like no, no one in the media likes dealing with him. So I asked mm -hmm. him, well, was that because Otani? Like, is it because, like, Otani shuts himself off and mm -hmm. this guy's just not pretty? He goes, well, maybe. He goes, but but it, but it, that's all you got to say is, like, hey, my, I, I, you know, I work for my client. He goes, his way of going about it, we've never liked. So there's there's a lot of people in the media. Wow. And, and so when you're not liked in the media and something comes out on you, they're vultures. So yeah. he's going to get it. He's gonna get it because they don't like him. So Damn. it's gonna be they're gonna get him. <laughs> like Jeff, I hope I hope if we advance in our career, the media likes us. <laughs> Damn it. Because well, oh, yeah, we're, yeah. we're all like, I mean, we're not it's 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 you, guys, you like, guys well, aren't you, do is, you, go, you guys guys aren't four million in debt. <laughs> yeah, no, but him, but he, he was literally like like not even asking um the questions that, that were being asked to them. What yeah. I what 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 the one guy told me was is that he would we would ask him a question yeah. and he would flip the question and ask Otani into something that would oh, make yeah. Otani upset with the reporter. Right. So it's like Ooh. he was sabotaging relationships with Otani. Okay. And um mm -hmm. and he said the only reason he knew that is because someone else who knew what he was saying to Otani, um, so these guys recorded, right? Yeah. So these yeah. guys recorded, and he said when he went back to 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 you know to mm -hmm. to to do his article and do everything, someone else like he you know, he said he played it back for someone who spoke the language. And Man. the guy's like, he didn't tell him anything you just said. Well, like, he's, dumb. Right? he's dumb because you got to know, uh, you know, a prestigious, uh, you know, organization like the Dodgers would definitely do their research on everything. Yeah, yeah. Big so, big so, big so it, just, it was just a bad, yeah. and it's just short-sighted greed because your guy just yeah. signed it seven. You knew this guy was about to get um, over five, six hundred million dollars. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like just you're essentially his best friend. You've known, you guys have been to, known each other since you were 12 years old. Yeah, like the fact that that man, when money gets involved, bro, people yeah, just man, it's, it's, sometimes. Yeah. I hate that shit, man. You always gotta stay true to yourself, no matter what. You know, do the you know what you to the top. Keep doing those things because eventually, you, you're gonna get you know discovered. Unfortunately, you know, no that's... discipline, no discipline. Yeah, because he that, he, he fell apart. And, and, yeah, and, and, and uh, what I was about to say is real quick. That's what I love about our little group is that we just communicate. Doesn't matter what you're going through, what's happening in your life. We just communicate, 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 keep it open and don't keep secrets like communicate. Yeah. Let I'll everybody else in the group know what you're going through. So yeah. we could, you know, if you need help, OK. Yeah, but, communication is key for any yeah, sort of relationship, Heck, especially in your main you know, personal relationships. So, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. But really quick, guys, because I know Jeff almost has to go. I don't want to let him oh, go without man. asking these uh, fun <laughs> questions real quick. All right. Uh, we're, we're taking it back to the summer days when we had a little bit of fun with a round. Oh, oh man. Oh, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep it light today. Later on, we're going to get to some feisty stuff, man. But uh, uh, let, let me start with Jeff. Uh, if you could pick a different time and place, 
uh, to have lived in, what would it be and why? So you can't pick this one. You can pick any other timeline. Yeah, yeah. time and place. That's crazy. Uh, man, I'd probably be the coldest bootlegger if I worked in New York in the 20s. Um, <laughs> I, I believe that. I believe yeah, that. But, um, yeah. You know what? I'm going to take... I'm going to take the murderers row Yankees living in the Bronx Ooh. and back in that era and watching the classic yeah. Yankee teams um, yeah. of that era. Um, that would be, that would be insane. Like the, 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 the Lou Gehrig, the Mickey Mantles, the Joe DiMaggio, like, like yeah. getting in, in those areas and watching like, cause I, I know you guys mostly know me as a basketball guy, but my first love was baseball. Baseball. Yep. Uh, being able to watch that era of dominance, um, that that that'd be it for me. Hey, that's okay. a good, that's a, that's a good uh, that's a good era to, to go back to. Uh, Chris, what about you, bro? Where, where, where are we traveling to? Man? For, for me, it's simple. Uh, if if I could travel into another body, person is uh, I I've always seen myself as a uh, Cooper <laughs> on the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, bro. The question was time era. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm let, let me let me get there. Go ahead. Do you, Chris? Let me get there. Let me get there. Let me get there. Let me oh, get there. Let me get there. Um, talk, to another body, man. Yeah. To, to another body. Uh, um, uh, back oh, in the uh, Showtime, Showtime era. Um, because I could see myself being like a uh, a Cooper type of player. So that, 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 that. you gotta love Chris, man. He's just like, I tried, I tried, but it is that is a different era. I mean, obviously, uh, uh well, the, the Showtime era was in the, in the uh, late yeah. 70s, right? So, um, you I, know, I, I, I would love to be in that just era, just uh, man, you got everything yeah. you need right there in front of you, and uh, you still had um, uh, uh, Jim Bus, you know, doing his thing. It was so, a great era, man. You oh, would have loved to party with uh, Dr. Jerry Buss and all of that, huh? I man, I great. like to party now. What do you think? <laughs> I'm like, man, right, <laughs> man. Are you kidding me? Man? Oh, that's right. No, but, but, but all right, all right. I would be listen, listen. I would be at every um uh after what what was it called? Uh, uh Jeff, the uh forum, the, the forum, forum club. club. <laughs> forum, yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding? I would be like the main dude, like at the <laughs> forum club, like on. The bar dancing and all kind of crazy shit. like yeah <laughs> well party animal all right we see you chris we see you <laughs> he's got his motives man i like mm. it i like it all right uh now if you could uh, talking about otani's interpreter if you could master any language instantly which would it be and let's start with you again jeff any language uh italian man <clears throat> Okay. italian i could be ordering pastas i never dreamed were possible right so uh yeah i would do italian yeah, for sure. Italian's hard. Italian's a cool I would love movie. to master Italian. Living in New York during the time of the of the oh. Warriors, Royal Yankees. Yeah, that'd be, that that'd be ideal for me. That's that's a great that's a great one. What about you, uh, Chris? I'll take it to a whole other level. I just want to learn a language that doesn't even exist here on Earth. <laughs> just give me something that I've never heard of. If it if it's <laughs> bro, <I> can speak <laughs> yeah, I love let, it. Me, oh let me let me speak yeah. alien. Let me speak hey, alien. If I, could speak, the box, if, man. I, if I could speak alien, yes, I would. We'll start calling you Jack out the box, man. Because you can't the box. I tell you that. I love it, Chris. I love it. Uh, for me, guys, I think I mean any language would be really cool to speak. Uh, you know, Chinese. I heard is one of the hardest to learn. You know, so that would probably I would take the shortcut. I love their culture, everything, man. That the Chinese language would probably be it for me or Japanese because I also like their culture. Uh, but uh, you know, even Brazilian would be fire. I mean, there's so many cool languages. Um, all right, uh, let's see here. Um, all right, this is a good one. This is a good one. All right, <laughs> what is the craziest rumor you've ever heard about yourself that was not true? Oh, my yeah, I can't even say it on here. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say it. Oh. Oh man! I'll say it for you that Empire Jeff was a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I never, I never, I never. Uh, but I don't live too far from Chatsworth. But no, that ain't me. But um, no. Nah, so he was the director. Keep it the straight. director. <laughs> oh man, God, there's my God. There, there, I mean, you know what it is. There's rumors every like all the time, man. Especially, especially when you're coming up, when you're growing up, like that. Yeah. Crazy. Let, let me let me think about what I can say on here though. Um, there there was a rumor that I died. I heard a rumor. I heard there was, there was once a rumor Damn. I died. Yeah, 
So there was, uh, yeah, I did. I, I tell you, back like in in high school, these dudes. Uh, I got sick. I got I got sick and I missed. Like and I never missed school, man. My my parents like we don't get out of the house. We want you got way too much energy. You're too damn hyper. Take your ass to school. Be their problem, right? So one yeah. one time I, I I got like really sick. I don't know if it was like bronchi. I don't know whatever it was. And yeah. I missed like three or four days of school. And, and my <laughs> one of my boys back calls me to check him. Like, Yo, you good? You good? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm I'm good. I'm straight. He goes, you straight? I go, yeah. I go, man, dude, I feel like I died, man. I was just, man, this just didn't got me. And he just starts laughing, right? He had one of those like infectious ass laughs, right? So he starts yeah. laughing. I laugh, so I start coughing again. He's like, man, you good? I'm like, I'm good, man. And it's like, so he went, he went to school and told everyone that I died. <laughs> right? oh, and, I, and I started getting like, yeah, and I, like, and I was like, man, it's so like, what happened? He goes, well, you said you felt like you died. I was like, so I was like, man, you <laughs> like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> so that that's one, but I've had I've had some like crazy dramatic ones that are that damn, like, are, people start in fires all the time. Well, damn, that's crazy. Death is I I did not expect that one today. Yeah, man. Um, I, I I mean, obviously, he knew I didn't die, but he was yeah. messing with people, and uh, yeah, man, that was. Tell you what, you don't really, you don't really know how much people really care about you until you think you've actually died. <laughs> like I'll tell you that right now. But Great. man, yeah, that happened to me, man. What about you, Chris? Any rumor, any crazy rumors about you, bro? No, but uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Redbone Six Six Two. Uh, that's one of my coworkers there. Oh, cool, love her man. to shout death, Redbone. Brittany. Yeah, love you, love you, and she's she's definitely down with Court King. She's definitely joined hey. the the Court King's uh family. Uh, but no, I don't. I've never been that popular to do that so no, nobody, nobody, nobody. family's got rumors bro i've had some, some of my yeah. worst no, oh, rumors no. were family I, related I, I, you gotta right. remember it you gotta remember i'm a libra so i could get along with everybody in the family like literally like i have my relationships with everybody in the family and it might be and it might not be the same with every person but yeah, yeah. but hey hey, hey. hey. Right here. <laughs> this, this is what i do Love when it. you ask when you ask questions, I don't have an answer to. I blast on them hater. There you go. There you go. I've, I've, um, had, I've had multiple, man. Yeah. Uh, like I had one uh, when me and my wife were dating. Like I told you, I had a really huge basketball program right at the time. Yeah. And there was a there was a it was a it was a Friday night like tournament game, and there were probably a good 150 people in the gym, right? And we pull up, and my my the um, she's my wife now, but we weren't even like engaged then. And oh, one of the dope, one of the man. kids, uh, one of the kids arrested. Like, so is that is it? Is it uh, you guys married yet? You guys married yet? Like, nah, bro, we're not married. You engaged? No, we're not engaged. We go to pick up. Oh, my center was late. He was playing two games that day, so I had to go pick him up at another park, right, and then right. get him back. So we were gone. We were gone maybe twenty minutes, and this little dude, man, told the entire gym that I was engaged. Right, yeah. the entire gym that I'm engaged. So we walk back in. Everyone's pointing, pointing at her. <laughs> Like, 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 and like coming up, and like some of the I people are like my really yeah. close friends, like, like yeah. family. They're like, Hey, Jeff, you got something you want to tell us? I was like, Well, yeah, stretch. We got a game in 15 minutes. And like, and they're like, No, no, you, you engaged. You didn't tell them, like, what? So, like, 200 people thought I was engaged. And it, and I, I did end up marrying her, but we weren't engaged at the time. That's crazy. But I'm telling you, rumors are nuts. This is a great question with multiple layers. I myself have had crazy, crazy stories like that, but that one's crazy right there. People are just so nosy, man. Sometimes I hate it when people don't know something and they think they know it, bro, and they spread it like a wildfire. For me, I used to work at this uh, hardware, uh, not a hardware store, electronic slash furniture store called La Curacao. It's a Hispanic oh, store. Oh. Yeah, I used to work at every, every mall. Yeah. <laughs> I was in customer hey. store service, bro. Go ahead. Chris, go ahead, bro. No, I was gonna say I was trying to buy, buy a PlayStation Four from them, and they Don't tried do. to charge me seven hundred yeah. because they tried to add games and controllers, bro, and, I a TV, to buy TV, and a couch, and I was like, nah. Yeah, that that store is a big theft. Uh, I, I quit for the same reason. I was in customer service. They wanted me to lie to the good people. I, I was like, nah, these are my people, man. Uh, but yeah, I remember I once walked a girl to her car. And Damn. Uh, oh yeah, you asking for that? You, you yeah. no, because of that, it's gonna get you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. because but she had, she told me to to walk her to her car because she had a stalker ex boyfriend. Mm -hmm. It turns out this girl liked me, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so the rumor the next day was like everybody was like, "Oh, we I heard you guys are going out." I was like, "What the fuck?" I just walked in there, and <laughs> car, <bro. laughs> like um, you know. So that's just you know rumors. That's just one of many, bro. There's been so many. There was one. I used to, you know, hustle because I had to, you know, survive when I was younger. And people used to say I sold drugs. I wasn't hustling drugs. I'll tell you that. You know, but people always start rumors mm -hmm. uh, at my mom's local church. I mean, there, there's been all kinds of rumors started on me that just cap, cap. But uh, that, that's just the way 
life goes sometimes. That's why I wanted to ask that question. I knew you would have some juicy ones for me. I'm, I'm <laughs> shocked Chris don't got one for me, man. I'm like, dang, he really steers. No, you. yeah, I was, dude, in, in, in high school, I was the art dude. Like, you needed something for your yearbook. You needed something for a poster. Like, I would do it, and I would, like, create it, and we're done. Like, there's no controversy. Like, I never... You know, I went to Inglewood High School, which was a Native American, you know, a represented <laughs> high school. So, you know, there was nothing like even the artwork I created for the yearbook was like respectful. Like I didn't do it. I, yeah, man. And listen, listen, man. Listen, man. Search is a fool, it's, bro. <laughs> it's funny, dog. Um, yeah, but, I, I, I love I, it. I love yeah. it. I, I was always like, I was always the good kid. Just make sure that I pass class. That's good, brother. That's good, man. That was that was fun, guys. Those, those ain't, no rumors, fun. ain't no rumors here. No rumors. Now, good, now don't 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 ask me about uh, my adult <laughs> life. Don't ask me about my adult life after high school. Because I mean, I was just asking for rumors in general. But oh, know. okay, okay, okay. So hold on. So, so now, oh, so no. now we gotta extend the show. We gotta extend the show. So uh, no. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> As an adult, yeah, it's, it's so many things that happen that uh, with your what you call your uh, so-called friends. I'm a best with my guy Lakers in five here. I heard a rumor that uh, hey DJ, I heard a rumor that Inglewood's not part of LA, bro. Is that true or not, bro? That just made my heart drop. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> no, I'm messing with my guy DJ. I'm messing with my guy. DJ. World War we, were, we, we, were, we were on a panel one time. Oh, we were on a panel yeah. one time. And uh, I can't believe you just said that. No, no, yeah. I'm messing with DJ. I'm messing with DJ because it's it's an inside joke thing. So it's like okay. that was a rumor. That was a rumor that was flying around on that show. And it was like a couple of Clipper fans. So I was trolling. I was messing with them. I was trolling them. Oh, and uh, D- DJ, DJ was in the chat. <laughs> yeah. See, DJ. Yeah. And yeah. DJ was in the chat, and I was like, and he was like, "What are you talking about?" Because he's he's from Inglewood, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah see that. So it was like DJ's all was always trolling me because he used to have these premonitions that James Harden was gonna end up a Laker, and he kept like trolling me with that nonstop. So I'm like, "Don't you go there, don't you go there, DJ?" <laughs> right? So once I found one thing that kind of like got him on that, I just messed with him from there. But th- yeah, sorry, that was that was more messing with DJ. There, so, right? so that was a rumor. So so I'm specifically down the street from the uh, SoFi Stadium. So mm-hmm. I know a lot of family and friends that have been um, um, moved out of the area because of the uh, Clipper oh, Stadium, yeah. the yeah, Clipper yeah. Stadium. So, and I know SoFi had a few people that had to move out, but not as much as the Clipper Stadium because the Clipper Stadium is more in of a, it's more in of a, it's more in a location where um, there would be apartment buildings and there was community. houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, community. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, SoFi Stadium was mostly the um, Hollywood. Um, oh shit! What was it called? The Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood Park, right? Hollywood Park. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. and I used to go there um, every once in a while with my with my dad, and we would just have a good time, have a hot dog here and there, and he would gamble. But um, uh, that's why I don't respect and I probably will never respect um, uh, the billionaire and I won't say his name because we don't need issues. But um, yeah, I, I just think, you know, they did what they had to do to get the uh, the uh, license for that uh, arena and uh, they did what they had to do. And I also saw a couple of videos where, you know, things didn't go down the way they should have gone down. And um, yeah. that's all. Yeah, that's all. That's all. We don't got to get into all that. <laughs> For sure, man. No, definitely, man. Definitely was fun. Uh, definitely got to get into some of these more fun questions and get to know you guys a little bit so that, so that the chat gets to know you guys a little bit better. But I uh, appreciate it. Man, man, I'm an open book. Let's, what, <laughs> what else do you want? What else do you want? <laughs> no, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We're already extending it past uh, my guy Jeff's timeline. But uh, I know. Yeah, thank, yeah, you guys, man. thank you guys again for, for tapping in, man. My, <clears throat> my, my panel here, my co-host. And thank you to the chat as well for tapping in really quick. You guys want to shout out anything? Go ahead and take it away, guys. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode, though. Go ahead, Jeff. I know you got some stuff on the horizon. Oh yeah, man. I'm just like I said. You know, I've been telling you guys <clears throat> for months that I'm getting ready to start covering baseball heavy. So head on over to Empire Jeff TV on YouTube, uh, on Twitter slash X at Empire Jeff underscore. And when I finally get my butt back over to Playback over there, Playback TV slash Empire Jeff TV. Um, uh, I'll, I'll be back there soon. Just schedule's been a little rough. Uh, but I'm, as soon as I'm, I'm just hoping you know, sooner rather than later, I'm hoping they had baseball over there. So we, we can, we can bring that flavor over there too. So pull up, you know, YouTube channel, playback, Twitter, all those different places, man. Shout out to Dan as usual, man, for 
allowing us on this platform once again for Around the League, man. It's incredible. Always is. Never gets old. Always enjoy it. Always have fun. Never take it for granted. Uh, shout out to, to to the graphic guy, Chris Man, for all his endless just oh, no, blessings and graphics that he does and all the incredibleness over there. And shout out to the chat, man. You guys forever rocking over here. So doing great work. Uh, as usual, man, the, 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 this show would not be or none of our shows would be the same without you guys. Uh, we would just do videos, not lives, right? If it wasn't for you guys. So you know what I mean, so shout out to you guys. You guys make it what it is. And uh, just you know, thank you guys for allowing me to be part of this, uh, you know, community. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciated uh, to this day. So thank you guys. Man, pleasure. Pleasure having you, brother. Go ahead, Chris. Any any shout outs you want to give out? Uh, well, first of all, to you two, because without you two, I don't. And that means uh, Dan, the Laker fan and Jeff empire jeff uh i have like nothing to do with my life so i would just be like <laughs> stop it <laughs> stop it but you i would it. just be like this in the corner uh, somewhere no, just no, like no. doing nothing like easy but, uh, with the yeah glass. yeah, Jeez, yeah you gotta get, you gotta, i'll be like this in the corner <laughs> but, but no and then um uh, a quick shout out again to uh redbone 662 um Brittany, uh love you to death um that's that's a co-worker that of mine that uh has always, has always had my back and she's also a terrific graphic designer that um, awesome. is super talented if we if she could put her thing in the uh go ahead and put your stuff in the uh the chat when we could look you up but um to the, again the both of you guys you guys are amazing chat has been amazing um of course search i don't i can't even say like to put into words what search has done for dan Jeff, and then not only for YouTube, but for me, which is a dude that doesn't even have a, like a YouTube channel, he's just like like this with like mm -hmm. with links. And I'm not convinced that Search is a real person. I think he's AI. Yeah. To be honest with you, yeah. I didn't. I've told him that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and and I just you know it's just so much respect. Like, dude, if he if if you're listening to me, if you ever need anything, just shoot me a you know I'm sure he could figure out how to find me and shoot me a text. And, oh no, he, but, he, he will yeah, find. Yeah. He yeah, will search he will, he will he will me and yeah. destroy me. Yeah. But no. um uh, uh yeah, again, uh big shout out to the Lakers in five. Um uh mixtape uh Dan, what is it? Mixtape. I, I don't want to get mixtape kings, mixtape mixed kings. kings, yeah. Uh -huh. yep. mm -hmm. uh, don't forget um die hard. Uh, die hard, don't forget die hard. And when we say die hard, Laker fans, uh -huh. uh, there's so many people, and then don't forget me's love you yeah we Mies. miss you man oh we hope to have him back soon yes sure Mies. and yeah. i'll keep going dan so just take it off <laughs> dan dan, dan <laughs> show your shirt show your shirt oh yeah oh yeah hey 21 <laughs> gang man slaughter slaughter gang you guys know 21 savage you guys know this this is a spinoff of his mixtape man lebron james season 21 slaughter gang in the building man shout out to chris for this one man definitely definitely excited man and by the way shout out to the whole court kings team because we all brainstorm we all put in the work man to make things happen uh you know jeff putting in the work behind the scenes getting everything together chris doing some of the artwork myself doing some of the brainstorming and and of course me as well with some of the ideas and work so the whole team works hard man so appreciate you guys but that's gonna wrap it up for us guys uh much love another successful episode of around the league we'll see you guys here next week hope to have my guy me's back by then yes, sir. please have a rest a great rest of your evening guys peace out Speaking of rumors, they said Portland was a dope city. That was a lie, bro. That was a lie.